Today we will be talking about terahertz radiation antennas. First, we will take a look at the properties of terahertz radiation and learn a bit more about the general background. The specific region of radiation we are interested in is the frequency of 0.3 to 10 terahertz. On the electromagnetic spectrum, this, this range lies in between microwave and infrared light and its properties of each. Terahertz radiation is also referred to by many other names in different branches of physics. These include submillimeter radiation, terahertz waves, terahertz light, T waves, T light, T rays, T lux. In this image, we can see a red box which identifies the range which is known as the terahertz gap. As you can see, the terahertz gap exists with wavelengths less than visible infrared light but is greater than radio waves. Like microwaves, terahertz radiation can penetrate a wide assortment of materials, including clothing, paper, cardboard, wood, masonry, plastics, and ceramics. However, it cannot penetrate polar liquids like water or metals, and this means that the radiation at these frequencies have limited penetration through fog or clouds. Additionally, compared to microwaves, the penetration of these waves is not as deep. The image here shows an infrared scan of a common household item. Moving on, here are some properties of terahertz radiation. Many materials and substances possess what is referred to as a unique terahertz fingerprint. That is to say, when looking at the spectroscopy of an object under terahertz radiation, we detect radiation that is unique to that material or substance. Because of the non-ionizing characteristics of the terahertz radiation, terahertz radiation can be used safely under medical imaging applications. The radiation coming from terahertz radiation is not harmful to body tissue or DNA. In fact, it only penetrates a few millimeters into the skin, at which point it dissipates immediately. One of the many benefits this particular frequency includes is a much higher data transfer rate than transistors. In the image, you can see a small scale terahertz communication device in use. The leftmost pillar holds a small signal emitter, while on the right there is a receiver. The data that is outputted by the emitter is analyzed by the receiver, which allows for communications. Now that we have a background on terahertz radiation, we can speak specifically about terahertz antennas. For any application, we need to understand the basic concepts of terahertz antennas, which are the method used to transmit and receive terahertz radiation. Specifically, for imaging purposes, we will dissect the photoconductive antenna, or the PCA. The PCA consists of a highly resistive semiconductor film with two electric contact pads. The image here shows exactly what that means. Represented by the two blue rectangles here and here are the contact pads, while this larger yellow area here is the highly resistive direct semiconductor thin film. Now this red area here represents the signal that is being either emitted or received by the antenna. The antenna functions as a transmitter when a voltage is applied to the two contacts whereby the excited car carriers from the film are transmitted via an optical pulse resulting in an electromagnetic pulse. Here in this image, we can see an example of a high class transmitter. The signal is sent through this opening that you see here, while the remaining components are used to generate the signal. As a receiver, the antenna works when a current amplifier is applied to the contacts, as opposed to a voltage which is used for a transmitter. When the time dependent field hits the antenna, it creates a measurable, unique current proportional to the original source. This image here shows a common optical pulse sensor, which is used to receive a terahertz signal. The wiring is then used to communicate this signal to a computer, which can then translate this unique current into a message allowing for communication. The quality of radiation depends largely on the material and the shape of the antenna. For example, 
metallic antennas have a low radiation efficiency in terahertz radiation. This is often problematic for terahertz signals. This image here shows an image of a log periodic tooth antenna, which is often very effective in transmitting terahertz signals. The quality of terahertz signals and terahertz radiation often affects the applications in which the system can be used for. Moving on to some specific applications, we can see two main everyday uses, imaging and communication. Because of its low photon energy and harmlessness to human tissue, terahertz imaging is safe, less invasive than x-ray, and good to use for medical purposes as it can still penetrate several millimeters of tissue with some reflection. Furthermore, terahertz radiation is used to detect epithelial cancer cells. This process is painless, safe, and non-invasive. Here we can see a terahertz radiation being used to scan the hand of an individual. The individual has no protection on it as it is not required. This outlines the safety of these terahertz signals. In airports and travel security, we find a large variety of substance detection applications. With the ability to penetrate plastics and fabrics, but not metal, detecting concealed weaponry is easy. For example, due to the terahertz high spatial density, knives can be easily detected as well as the fingerprints that many materials leave behind in the terahertz frequency, like we mentioned earlier, make it easy for detection of drugs and explosive substances. Other imaging applications include detecting cavities and impurity detection of pharmaceuticals. The image here shows a man in both a regular picture and then a terahertz scan. The left shows a man who looks as though he might just be any regular person, but upon seeing the terahertz scan on the right, we see that he was hiding a knife behind the newspaper. Using scans like this, we can identify harmful items and prevent them from being used. Finally, we come to the communication application. It's only useful at high altitude, since water vapor will absorb the radiation and ruin the signal when the atmosphere is dense. We can see in this image an example of a terahertz communication system. The tower on the left transmits the signal to the tower on the right, which receives the signal very quickly, allowing for a high data transfer rate. Hopefully now you have a basic understanding of the properties of terahertz radiation and its uses. Thank you for listening.